So I received a phone call from uh, Mercy for Animals regarding an undercover investigation they were doing in Texas. They've got someone inside a cow rearing farm and what they do there is they grow out calves for the dairy industry. I think two bales will be enough? Yeah, I think that'll be good. How many days you gone for? I'll be back on Friday. It's quite a few days. Yeah, it's a lot of driving. Cows can usually produce milk for up to 18 months. And so every 18 months, the cows need to be prepared to have another baby. These baby cows, less than a day old, are being taken away from their moms and brought to these facilities where they're either grown out and returned to the dairy industry or just left to die. Yeah, that's good. All right, be safe. All right, thanks. The undercover investigator has worked some sort of deal to release four of the calves, basically, to him. In turn, he's going to give them to the gentle barn, and we're going to take them, nurse them back to health, and rehabilitate them, and make them part of our program in working with inner city at-risk and special needs children. Right. The Gentle Barn is an agency that deliberately takes in animals that cannot find homes because they're too damaged. But somewhere along the line, they're going to be healed. And once they're healed, they stay with us for the rest of their life. And then they help us heal abused kids. We work with kids that traditional therapy doesn't work with because they're not going to sit on a couch and tell their life story to somebody. You can't talk directly to them. But I can talk about the animals that have their same stories. And so through the stories, I can talk indirectly to them. And all of a sudden, whereas they come in, angry and shut down within 20 minutes through a story they're looking me in the eye and they're wanting to know more because they're connecting with what i'm saying because really the animal story is their story the hope is that the person who's there undercover will be able to stay there they call it heat you know they say right now he's got no heat on him but if um if any word gets out or any kind of spook happens, then um, you have to consider that their willingness to do what they're doing to the animals that are there, which is so brutal, you know, could happen to him. See you on Friday. Good job. Talk to you on the way. All right. Thank. Bye, guys. Bye. Let's do this. Ten hours, here we go. The rescue we just did was um, a pretty intense one. The method in which they were euthanizing the animals, um, and that's such an unfair word uh, when coming to this particular place. Uh, the word isn't euthanized, the word is murder. Most states, about 30 states, have common farming exemptions, which mean that anything that you do a farm animal, as long as it's considered standard in the industry, is deemed legal. And we know that the industry is capable of really egregious abuse. Um, so they essentially allow the industry to decide for themselves what is appropriate. It comes down to economics. If you have to have a baby to have milk from a cow, but you you don't want the baby, you just want the milk, then you've got millions of babies not wanted because their milk is stolen. So then what do you do with those millions of babies? Okay, there's two choices. You can shoot them in the head and pay to, to get them removed. But then the, the dairy industry is cutting into their profits by having to dispose of all the dead babies. So they came up with this veal idea to try to make a profit on the waste from the dairy industry. The veal industry is the dairy industry. And that is the best kept secret in America. People don't know. The guy who's in there now, and I, I can't even believe that he's enduring what he is, is witnessing calves being either left to starve to death and die or beaten in the head with hammers. And sometimes they, they don't succeed and they lay there dying on the floor and uh, sometimes it takes them hours or even a day. And um, I mean, it, it's, 
it's unconscionable to do that kind of thing to any living being. More and more people are starting to understand that there may be something cruel or wrong about the way that we're treating farmed animals, but they don't really want to know. Because once they know, there's now an obligation to become part of the solution. Whether you agree with animals being raised or killed for food, certainly most people can agree that at least these animals shouldn't be tortured. And it's a complete abuse of power to subject these animals to literally a, a lifetime of misery. So um, we just got to Texas. We're about to go in and meet with the undercover investigator and Nathan who's here from Mercy for Animals. We're gonna learn about what's been going on there and what our cover story is gonna be and get set up for that. So, um, you know, there's a lot of terrible problems that exist at, at this ranch called E6 Cattle Company. They're based out of Hart, Texas. They have about 20,000 calves on the property. They give no medicine to these certain calves, these crossbreed calves, and they don't treat them at all. The owner admits it on tape. He lets them die. They're not worth much to him. And if they're, they're in the middle of dying, that people will just let them suffer through the night and maybe kill them tomorrow, you know, the next day, if they've survived. You know, one of my duties is when we go in after we feed the calves, we gotta collect the dead. I go with another guy and we pull in between like 12 and 25 calves a day. We pull all these dead calves and some of them are marked for dead, but they're still alive because they're just, they're down. They can't get up, they won't stand, they, they're barely breathing. And the first euthanasia method that I was shown is using a hammer. So, you know, uh, I was hired as a carpenter. We have carpentry hammers and we just try and you know, the, this guy shows me that he takes the hammer and he beats the calf on the back of the head and just whacks them. And it's like the calf will keep breathing for a while and keep twitching and moving. You know, I complained about this to the owner and said, look, this hammer's not working very well. You know, do y'all have a rifle? It's this little 22 rifle. And I've seen a calf left over that, that someone had shot that was just bleeding out of the head and still alive. And I mean, this the 22 rifle just, just does not work very well. So unfortunately, unfortunately with the options between a carpentry hammer and this little 22 rifle that jammed twice on me when I tried to fire it, uh, you know, the hammer is, seems to be the more humane method of euthanasia. If you can even call beating a calf in the head humane. Anyone that's buying meat, dairy, or eggs that could very likely be coming from these facilities really has to also look at themselves and how they're responsible because essentially we're hiring people to do this on our behalf. Somebody's doing this dirty work. Animal Ag hates to hear us say, but I have the footage to prove it from all these cases. It could be a corporate farm, it could be a family farm, it could be large, it could be small. There is illegal abuse going on. And what I have found in particular is that the less human contact there is with the animals at a facility, the more neglect. The more human contact, the more violence, especially when you have more animals to deal with because you have to make a move. And the quickest way to do that, when you're worried about the bottom line, which is the dollar, is to abuse the hell out of them. There's, a, there's another part to it, which is, well, what the heck are they supposed to do? They need the money, they have to work, they have children, they have families that they're supporting. So if they're being told by their boss that this is how you do it, they're gonna listen. This is, and this is a privately owned place. This is a family farm. I feel devastated that it's happening. And I feel like I will work my fingers to the bone and I will work to the end of time to try to stop it. What we're gonna do now is, first we're gonna try and get some calves out of there. And that's where General Barton comes in. You know, Mercy for Animals is gonna to try to get some kind of legal action taken, go to the authorities, but Gentle Barn is, is a group that, you know, they can be a voice for the voiceless and try and help expose what it is that goes on at this place day to day. I met the undercover investigator a couple times now. Um, he, uh, he blows my mind. The fact that a, a vegan man with the compassion that he has can go into a facility like this and experience what he does and have to participate in what's going on there in the name of the animals. I have so much uh, admiration 
for him and his work and the organization and their work. It's a blessing to be able to have pulled those babies out, to have been able to been the person to go and do that, that, um, that I felt honored to be a part of it. Hopefully this case will be bigger than just four calves. We hope that, that their stories wake up a lot of people, the masses, the public, to what's really happening to farmed animals. And if we as a society can have compassion and empathy and respect towards creatures that very few of us know or can relate to, I think that the, the world in a much broader sense would be a, a kinder and more peaceful place for, for all of its inhabitants. Don't just believe what we're told. Do research, check it out, figure out what's going on behind the scenes, and then follow your heart.